Let's look at the character of Miss Havisham in Great Expectations. Now, even if she is not the protagonist of this story, she is a very remarkable and memorable character who impacts the lives of all the characters, primarily Pip and Estella. However, of course, we also learn that she has lots of other connections to other characters. And we learn that she is a very bitter, very angry recluse who was jilted on her wedding day several years ago. However, she has never gotten over being rejected at the altar in her wedding day. Hence, she remains dressed in her wedding clothes. She also leaves her wedding food in another room in her massive large house to decay. And she stops all the clocks to the time that she was jilted on her wedding date so that she is unaware of time passing and the passage of time. We learn that she hates humanity. However, in particular, she hates all men because she sees them as symbolic of the man who basically rejected and jilted her on her wedding day. And she makes it her mission to basically raise Estella, who is her adopted child. She raises her, and of course she's an orphan, she raises her to basically hate men and use her beauty in order to betray and mistreat men. So when Pip comes into the picture as a young boy, Miss Havisham sees him as almost practice for Stella in honing her really horrendous, malicious behavior towards men, but she really aims this at Pip. And both Miss Havisham and Estella basically misguide Pip into believing that she hopes that Estella and him will marry, but she never has any of these intentions. Now, Miss Havisham eventually does die in a very horrible accident and she burns in her wedding day clothes. However, she is a very powerful character and of course she is one of the more remarkable characters that's very well known in Great Expectations. Now, of course, if you're writing about Great Expectations, she is definitely one of the key characters you need to be very well versed in knowing, understanding, and you also need to have lots of quotes ready to analyze. So as you can see behind me, I have selected all the relevant quotes to remember when it comes to the character of Miss Havisham and of course the word love analysis you can do when analyzing each quote. So let's go over them in detail and these quotes are a mix of both others descriptions, of course Pip's description of Miss Havisham but also what she says within the novel. Now the first quotation to bear in mind is when Pip is describing her as an immensely rich and grim old lady who lived in a large and dismal house, barricaded ellipsis, a life of seclusion. So this is sets up Miss Havisham's character. She almost seems to be this mythical figure because she never goes back out into society. She secludes herself and she never leaves her large decaying house. The word love analysis you want to do here in establishing Miss Havisham as this very bitter, reclusive woman who is jilted, which means rejected at the altar, is firstly the adjectives rich and grim. So whilst she's very wealthy, she's very well to do, she's part of the upper class, she illustrates the mistake that many Victorians make in assuming that just because you're upper class means that you're a happy person, you're a more moral person. In fact, actually, she's quite immoral in her actions and in her treatment of Estella. The other key word level analysis to do is the alliteration of L in lady lived and large, which emphasizes her as this almost mythical primordial creature that's living within this house, whom people almost think is kind of this legend, okay? Of course, Pip beholds her and he is shocked at what he sees. The second quotation from Miss Havisham's character is what Pip notices as he's looking around her house, her mansion, which is decaying. He notices that her watch had stopped at 20 minutes to nine, ellipsis, and of course, this is the time at which she was jilted on her wedding day, and she stops the passage of time so that she is unaware at how time passes. Now, the word level analysis to do is firstly the noun watch, okay, this is describing how she doesn't want time, and she doesn't want to have any awareness of time passing. Also remember, women's beauty is tied to their youth, and hence, with the passage of time, a woman's beauty fades. However, Miss Havisham does not want to understand or realize that her beauty is fading. So one of the uh, aspects of her stopping time is so that she's also unaware of her fading beauty, of her fading appearance. The other word level analysis you want to do here is alliteration of T in 20 and two. Now, the third quotation to bear in mind for Miss Havisham's character is when she tells Estella, she wants to raise Estella to be this uh, almost this curse on the race of men. She states, break their hearts, my pride and hope, break their hearts. Now here, you want to focus on the repetition on what she says, break their hearts. She says this emphatically. She really wants 
to seek revenge on Compison, the man that basically jilted her at the altar, but also seek revenge against all men. And she really hones in Estella. And also, I suppose, she's very abusive towards Estella as a way of basically making her into this figure and molding her into this female character who basically uses her beauty to allure men, but then ultimately break their hearts. This is what Miss Havisham's end goal is. The other quotation to bear in mind is when Miss Havisham classifies and categorizes real love as she states, real love, ellipsis, it is blind devotion, unquestioning self-humiliation, utter submission, trust and belief against yourself. So this is what she believes love is. And of course, you can see here, she's very bitter. She believes love is very misleading, very dishonest. And the person that is honest within the love is the person that's ultimately misguided. And of course, this is a reflection of how she was when she was in love with the man that never ultimately loved her back. Now, the word love analysis you want to do firstly is the hyperbole blind devotion, where she's saying that, you know, real love is somebody who basically goes against any reason, any rationality. But also you want to focus on the structural technique, which is listing of all the negative qualities she believes and she associates with love. Okay, so there's lots of listing of blind devotion, unquestioning self-humiliation, utter submission, trust and belief. So she's basically saying that love is a very irrational thing and she regrets the day that she ever fell in love because she then became irrational. The other quotation from Havisham's character is when she tells Pip she, she's so happy that Pip has fallen in love and he she basically tells Pip, whatever Estella does to you, you are to accept it and you are to still love her. She states, love her, love her, love her. If she favours you, love her. If she wounds you, love her. So here, she's basically so gleeful that Pip is basically falling under the spell and the beauty of Estella and she's really happy. She wants Pip to basically become her first victim and he does. Now, the word love analysis you want to do here is firstly the repetition of love her. It's repeated three times and of course this belongs to an exclamatory sentence showing just how gleeful Miss Havisham is that her schemes are working. The other quotation for her character is when she states, the broken heart, you think you will die, but you just keep on living day after terrible day. So here she's talking about her, how she herself almost felt like she would die when she was jilted, but almost this life became this dreary process of living, okay? Now, the word love analysis you want to do here is firstly the repetition of the pronoun you and the oxymoron where she says you think you will die, but you keep on living, okay? So the words die and living are opposite terms. And life is almost this curse for Miss Havisham as a result of her unrequited love. The final quotation to bear in mind for her character is when she seems very, very regretful of her actions, especially towards Estella. And also she realizes that what she did in terms of seeking revenge against all men was wrong. And she states, when she first came, I meant to save her from misery like mine. So basically she's saying, the reason why she made Estella such a negative and horrible person is almost to harden her against falling in love with men. Now, the word love analysis you want to do here is firstly the pronouns uh, of Estella relating to Estella, which is she and her. And also the other word love analysis you want to do is the alliteration of misery like mine. So of course here, Miss Havisham is showing how mistakenly she believed that if she made Estella really horrible, really malicious, she would never fall in love. But also she forgot the other element of if Estella never falls in love, Estella herself will never know true love and true happiness. So of course we can see that towards the end of the story, Miss Havisham does regret her actions. She begs Pip for forgiveness. However, we find that she changes a little bit too late and ultimately dies a really terrible, horrible death. So that's it when it comes to the key quotations relating to Miss Havisham's character.